Welcome back to the placement system series. In this video, I'll be showing you how to implement a collision system to your placement system. So let's just get right into that. So the first thing we need to do is obviously open up the placement handler. And we need to know when the object is colliding. So we're going to create a variable to track that. So we're going to create a new category. We're just going to call it other. And then we're going to create a variable called collided. And we're going to set that to nil since we don't know if it is actually colliding or not. Then what we can do is we can go and actually create a function to change the color of the object when it is colliding and then change it back when it isn't. So right below render grid, we're going to create a function and we're going to give it a comment and we're going to say that, and we're going to call this function, local function, and we're going to call this change hitbox color, just like that. And then we're just going to check if the primary part actually exists. And then we're going to also check after that if we are colliding. So if we have collided with something, then we're going to do that else. We're going to do that. Okay. So if we are colliding, we're just going to change the primary dot color to a new color three dot from RGB. You can do dot new as well. It doesn't really matter, but I just like to are from RGB because it, RGB colors and the values make more sense to me than going from zero to one. So anyway, I'm going to make it red and we're just going to do that. And we're going to copy and paste this. When we are not colliding, we're going to be green. And to be able to see these changes, make sure you have your hitbox as a transparency other than one. So yeah. Okay. So now we can actually go and start doing the collision function. So right below here, we're just going to create a function. This is going to be called handle collisions. Okay. And then in here, we're going to make sure that the object actually exists. And now we're going to create two variables. And actually before that, we're just going to set collided to false, uh, just because this is our base case. If we are not colliding, we want to have that be false. Okay. So now we can go and create two variables. One of them is going to be called local collision point, And the other one is going to be called collision points. So there we go. So the first one collision point is going to be equal to primary dot touched connect function end, and this is just going to give us a, uh, this is going to allow us to detect collisions. And the collision points variable is just going to return the, the, it's going to return an array of the parts that are colliding. So we're going to say primary, whoops, not print, get touching parts. And that is just a function to return an array of all of the objects that are currently colliding with this primary part. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to loop through the collision points. And so how do we do that? Well, we just say for i equals, we go from one to the number of objects in collision points. And then we can just step by one. And then we're just gonna do this. So the first thing we need to check is to make sure that our objects are not, uh, the colliding objects are not a descendant of the actual object we're using. So, or trying to place. And so how do we do that? Well. There's actually a function called is descendant of of all instances. So we can call that to check if it is a descendant of one of those objects. And a descendant just means it is within an object or is a child of it. So all of these parts here are descendants of crate. So that's what we want to check. Are we colliding with any of those? And if we are, we want to just ignore that. So to do that, we can just say if not and then we want to make sure that collision point points, I mean, of I. So this is just going to be whichever object we are currently looping on. And then there's a function called is descendant of, and this just takes a parameter of the object we want to search for. So, or the object we want to search in to make sure they're not in that object. In this case, we want to make sure that they're not in the object. And I'm also going to, actually, I'm not going to do it yet, but we are going to be adding it in for the player as well. But the reason why we're not doing it now is just to make sure that the collision actually is working. Okay, so then after that, 
if we are not colliding with anything in the object and it's something else that we are colliding with, then we can just set collided uh, to true. And then we can just break out of this loop because we don't need to um, we don't need to be looping anymore. And then we actually need to just disconnect the this event here. So to do that, all we can do is we can just say collision point, and then we can just say disconnect and do that. And then we can just return, and that's that. That is that is the collision function. So how do we actually do this stuff? Where do we want to call these functions or invoke them? Well, it's actually pretty simple. All we need to do is before we are going to move the object, we are just going to say, we're just going to call handle collisions. And then right below that, after we detect collisions, if there is anything, we're just going to call change hitbox color. And then we'll do our movement. And yeah, so now if we hit play, this should work. And again, make sure that your primary part is transparent. Okay, so as you can see, we have this green thing. If we just tap it to the uh, player, as you can see, we are currently colliding. And if we take it away, it isn't. So that that is that's that. Um, so it looks like that colliding collision detection is working. All right, that's pretty much it. But I am going to go over the code like I usually do, just to make sure that everything is making sense. Okay, so the first function we did was we created this change hitbox color. All this does is it checks if the primary part exists. And then if it does, we're gonna check if we have collided with anything using this variable here, which is going to track uh, if we are colliding. And if this is true, then we are going to set it to the collision color. Otherwise, we're just going to set it to the non-collision color. Handle collisions just detects collisions, obviously. Uh, we're actually gonna do a comment. We're just gonna say, handles collisions on the hitbox and probably in the next video I'll actually filter out the player um, if we need to but yeah and then this is just going to be handles color changes on the hitbox whoops hit box and there we go okay so this obviously just handles collisions. So we say if our object exists, then first off, we're going to set this to false just because we want to always assume that we aren't colliding first, because if we are, we're just going to default this at true and there'd be nothing to set it to false otherwise. So then we're going to create a variable for a collision point. This is just going to detect collisions. Then from there, we can figure out what parts are actually touching the object using this collision points variable, which is going to get a array of all the objects that are actually colliding. Then through that, we're going to loop through it and check if we are not colliding with anything within the object. And then we're going to set collisions to true. If we found something that is not in the object that we are colliding to, then we're gonna break out of the loop just like that. Then we're gonna disconnect the event up here and then return. And this obviously all gets invoked down here. So yeah, that's pretty much it. If you did enjoy this video, make sure you join the Discord server, give this video a like, and hit subscribe as usual. And yeah, by the way, if this video seemed short, it was short on purpose because there was a bug in the code that I was trying to do and I haven't fixed it yet. So I just wanted to get this video out um, because yeah, it is a pretty, it, I don't know how I haven't noticed it yet because it is in my place module V3 as well, but I'll explain more in the next video. But anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.